Hi, this is Shelly from Koala Knits and Knacks. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. Um, I'm going to show you how to make this four square. I think that's what I'm going to call it. I designed it in my um, little graph book and, and worked it out and I love how it turned out. I think I'll call it four square blanket. And you can make this in whatever size you want just by adding to the um, length and to the width. Just follow the desired pat or the same pattern that I'm showing you here. But I use loops and threads, uh, Baby Delight yarn. It's a three weight yarn. Um, I do believe that unfortunately it's it's um, no longer available, but you can find many substitutes in the three weight yarn um, that you can use for this project. Or go ahead and use your four weight yarn. Whatever yarn you choose to use, just follow the same pattern. I'm also going to use my Addy 22. Um, of course, if you have the Centro 22, you can go ahead and use that as well. But you'll also see in the, in the uh, photo that there is a baby beanie. Be looking for that tutorial as well because I have that posted on my channel as well as well as a link to how I make my pom-poms. So um, once you get all your supplies ready, join me and let's get started. Okay, we're ready to begin. Um, we've got our 22 machine set up. We've got our uh, three colors of yarn and our contrasting color of waste yarn and we're ready to begin. So let's bring our last white and our first black needle in line with our yarn guide here. Um, and again, I always mention this, uh, for those who are new. If you've got a permanent black marker, mark that red divider between the last white and the first black because it just will help you always see when your um, keys are, when the beginning of your row is coming around. And it is just like the best thing when you're changing colors, <laughs> okay? So we're gonna hook our waist yarn behind our first black needle. And we're gonna go in front of the next, behind and in front, all the way around. This is a long tail cast on using waist yarn. Go all the way around till it's behind the last white. And then you're going to go around until you have the desired amount of rows. I do seven or eight rows as a general rule. I think with this uh, piece of waist yarn that I have, I'm going to only get about six. So I'm going to, let's see, can I do one more? I'm going to leave it right there because I don't think that I could actually get around one more. And then uh, for my next, my next time I need waist yarn, um, I will start from the ball and I'll get rid of this one because I, I generally as a rule like to have six or seven or eight rows of waist yarn actually seven or eight at the very minimum is really what I do okay so I'm gonna open my yarn feeder I'm gonna put that in between my last white my last black make sure my row counter is set to zero and then for our first panel we're going to need to choose our one color so um, you can choose whichever of your two darker colors that you like. Or, you know, when you're making your squares that uh, that are a four square, um, you choose which two colors you want and you're gonna take one, one color. So I'm gonna choose the blue. My four square is checkered with blue and green and I'm gonna start with my blue. Okay, and it doesn't matter because the next panel you do, you're gonna start with, with the other color. So um, we're going to do, we're going to do both. So let's start with our blue color or your color of choice and we're going to knit off about three needles and then I take my working yarn on both and give it a pull my working yarn on both ends and give it a pull and you saw it go over that needle and that's just so that I can keep my tension the same on my first few needles that it is on the rest of the needles okay you're gonna go around and you're gonna do 10 rows five and you'll see why that red marked divider is so important eight nine i clicked on ten i'm going to come around and finish it and i see that coming around so i know that's the end of my tenth row just love it cut off your working yarn you're going to open your yarn feeder put that in between the last white first black you're going to take your second color that's in your four square and you're going to insert that into your yarn feeder between the first black and the last white. I hold both of those with my um, with my fingers there and I do three or four needles and again I take my working yarn on both sides and I give it a little tug. I'm going to help that one underneath this time because I should have done a few more needles. Then we're going to give that a snug tie. If you heard some um, background movie noise <laughs> when I first uh, started the blue round that's because I forgot to mute my TV and I'm watching a movie as I do this, a Christmas movie. <laughs> so anyways, now I caught it and I'm gonna mute it. So I'm gonna just keep going until this says I've completed row 20. 
I'm going to do 10 rows of this color. Nice thing about the Audi 22 is that it just works up so fast. And three weight yarn, it's a dream. It's just like a dream because it doesn't tuck and drop. Okay, so 20, finish that. And I'll watch that black marker coming around and I stop right at that marked. And I'm gonna cut that green one off. I'm gonna open my yarn feeder, take that working yarn out, put it between my last white, my first black. Then I'm gonna take my white and I'm gonna insert that into my yarn guide between those two needles, close the guide. Now this color is the one that you're going to do 20 rows with. So um, you've got your, your four square and then you've got your one solid square. Whatever color that is, that's what we're gonna use now, okay? And then I'm going to do three or four needles, do the same. I'm gonna take the yarn ends and pull that through and you watched it pop down under there. Tie a good strong knot. I always cut off my yarn ends for whatever reason. I just don't like them really long on the inside. Okay, and so then I'm going to knit 20 rows of this color, which will take me to row 40, and I'll finish row 40. Okay, so you keep working until you get that done. So you finish row 40 with this one color. So there's 10 rows of your first color, 10 rows of your second color, 20 rows of this third color, okay? This will be your solid square. Okay, so I'm going to just finish this up with you just because I'm almost there. 32, 33, 34, 5, 6, 37, 38, and one more. And I'm going to finish row 40, and I'm going to bring it around till I see that black divider in the middle. I'm going to cut off that end, tuck that underneath. Okay, open my yarn feeder, put it between my last white, my first black. Now, for me, I started with blue, then I did green, then I did white. Now I'm gonna choose my green again, all right? So whatever color you did before you did your solid white or your solid square, that's the color you're gonna choose again, okay? So I'm gonna put my green in there. I'm gonna do likewise, three or four needles, pull that taut, tie a strong knot, I'm going to go around and I'm going to do 10 rows with this color. Then I'm going to do the same thing, change my colors and um, work, on, work up the blue one. So now I'm doing green. So let me just recap that. I started with blue, 10 rows of blue, 10 rows of green, 20 rows of white. Now I'm gonna do 10 rows of green, then 10 rows of blue, and I'll see you back. All right, that didn't take long, did it? Um, it just works up so so quickly and um, you know I'm using the three weight yarn but you can you can do the same pattern with whatever weight yarn you want if you want to choose a worsted weight four weight yarn go ahead and do that as well and uh, you'll get a little bit bigger blanket but that's okay you might want to stop um, at 10 panels instead of instead of at um, 12 panels whatever you choose whatever you just lay it out and whatever the width is that you like that's where you stop okay so I'm going to now insert my white and I'm going to do the likewise that I have always done with every other color change. And I'm gonna do 20 rows of white. Every time I put that third color in, it's 20 rows, okay? Because that's my solid square. So once I'm finished my, well, let's do our 20 rows and then I'll see you back and, and we'll recap. I'm gonna click on row 80 and I wanna finish that row. So I have finished that row and completed 20 rows of my white, okay? So now if you look into your barrel, you'll see that your blue was before your white, okay? And so you're gonna, the last color you did before your white is the one you start with, okay? So it's, it's like you're rotating um, every time. So I'm going to take my white, I tuck that under there, take my white out, I'm gonna grab my blue, I'm going to do 10 rows of blue, 10 rows of green, oops, and then 20 rows of white. And then I'm gonna do 10 rows of green, 10 rows of blue, and 20 rows of white. So you do it until you get to your 200th row. And on your 200th row, we're going to be ending with two um, rows of, with 20 rows of white, okay? So again, you're going to start with blue, 10 rows of blue, 10 rows of green, 20 rows of white. So um, get a little book and mark this down as, I, as I'm saying it, okay? And then after your 20 rows of white, you're gonna do 10 rows of green, 
10 rows of blue, 20 rows of white. 10 rows of blue, 10 rows of green, 20 rows of white. 10 rows of green, 10 rows of blue, 20 rows of white. 10 rows of blue, 10 rows of green, 20 rows of white, and that will take us to 200. It sounds like a lot, but it's, it actually works up really, really well. So draw that out in, in squares like this and mark down my row count that I just gave to you, and that will help you as you follow along, okay? So I want you to continue along in that pattern until we get to row 200, and when we get to the end, we will um, we'll get back together, okay? So, um, but as, as your um, project is getting longer and reaching uh, the... Well, it's, you know, I, if, if it's getting in your way and you don't have a long distance for it to travel down below, you just keep rolling it up from underneath. And that will, that's what I have to do. And then it keeps the tension um, nice on your barrel and as you're working and it keeps your stitches nice, okay? So I'm going to finish this up until I get to the end of my panel and I'm going to be ending on 20 rows of white. Um, if you don't end on 20 rows of your solid color, then we've um, miscounted somewhere. So I'll meet you when you get that done. All right, so you've made it to the end and we've done 200 rows. I ended on my white. Now the one thing that I want to uh, um, tell you to do is to cut off a little bit longer of a tail than you normally would because when you're sewing your panels together, it's nice to have that little um, extra little extra piece of yarn here so that we can, when we're putting the panels together, I use, I sew it at the very top with that. So you need to have enough to put in your, in your needle, okay? So, and to have a little bit to work with. So I don't know, leave a foot maybe of, of, um, of a tail on your last one, as well as on the, in the beginning when you start, put a, about a foot of a tail inside your machine, okay? Now we're gonna add our waste yarn into the yarn feeder in between the last white and the first black. I'm going to just do one simple tie in there because I don't want my project to start unraveling. Then I'm going to do however many rows of waist yarn that you're comfortable with. I'll do seven. And one more and finish that. Okay, and then I'm going to cut off that waist yarn end. Get this ball of yarn out of the way and put it in between the last white, the first black. Then you're going to turn your crank and on the second time around, it lets go. And then I just always help it off just like that. Okay, so take that out of your machine and you've finished your first panel. Now I'm just going to uh, tell you what you're gonna do for your second panel and then we'll come together and we'll close the ends, okay? So for this one, let me just put it here. I might need to take my uh, my machine off to show you this, but let me just uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause this video and see you back in one second. Okay, I just needed to go where there where my Addy wasn't in the way so that you could see better. So we started with our blue, ten rows, ten rows, and twenty rows. Okay, and then we we whenever we finished our our longer piece here, the twenty rows, we started with the color that we ended with, and you'll see that pattern right through. Okay, so. That visual maybe will help you. So now what we're gonna do for our second panel is we're going to work this up the exact same way except we're gonna start with this color. So I started with blue and then green, then white. Now I'm gonna start with green, then blue, then white, then blue, then green, then white. So you're gonna follow the same patterns, guidelines um, as what you did with this. Whichever color you put before your longer piece, you start with that one, okay? But instead of starting with blue and green, we're gonna start with green, then blue. And work it up until you get, I hope you that makes sense. Then you're gonna work it up until you get to um, your 200th row. So if you're writing it down in your book, then I want you to, um, I'm gonna just grab one here. I want you to, to write down the pattern, okay? So, we're going to start with green, 10 rows, blue, 10 rows, white, 20 rows, then blue, 10 rows, green, 10 rows, white, 20 rows, then green, 10 rows, blue, 10 rows, this is all twisted, white, 20 rows, blue, 10, green, 10, white 20, green 10, blue 10, white 20. That's how you're gonna finish your second panel, okay? Now, the beauty, beautiful part about this is that you only need those two 
patterns, those two panels, and you're going to do six of each of those panels. Now, for our when we put our lay them down and, and we um, start sewing together, then we have to configure them four different ways um, to, to get our pattern to work, but we only need two different recipes or patterns of panels that I just explained to you. And you're gonna make six of each, and when you're finished that, come back and see me and we'll continue on, okay? Happy knitting, have fun, my friends. Okay, did you find that once you got going on that and did a couple panels that you just automatically knew the, uh, the rotation of the colors and you didn't even need to look at a chart or the notes that you took? Um, that's what I, that's what I found as I got going too. Okay, so we want to, oops, drop my hook. We want to stretch out our, our project all the way down widthwise and lengthwise. Let me go grab my hook. And then we're going to, um, seam up the ends. Okay, so whichever end you choose, let's just choose one here. Let's see what we get. One end is always easier to do than the other. At the beginning of your project, it unravels beautifully at the end of your project. Nope, it's the opposite. At the beginning of your project, you have to take out the first row to take it apart. Um, and I'll show you that here too. The end of your project, it's always easier. Okay, so let's take a look. I grabbed this, this end and I'm not, that's, um, we're gonna see where this, this waist yarn is coming out of this stitch. I'm going to put my stitch marker in there. Gonna grab my other stitch marker and to the left of that, you'll see, you'll see two stitches, one on top of the other. You're gonna put your, stitch marker in that top one, okay? Now from the point of my stitch marker, I'm gonna count that as stitch one. I'm gonna go around till I get to my um, 11th and 12th stitch, cause that's halfway around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. This is 11, this is 12. So I'm gonna go underneath my 12th stitch. So I have that loop on the hook that I'm gonna go underneath 11 and pull it through, put it on my hook. Then go to the bottom, take the next one, pull it through the loop on my hook, up to the top, pull it through the loop on my hook, back down to the bottom. Now, it doesn't matter if you go under like this or with your hook, see, just like that, underneath the stitch to pick it up and then turn it and come through. You can do it that way or you can just go over top and grab it. Um, the, the point is you just wanna get it through the loop that's on your hook, okay? So I always find it easier to grab it from the top. I mentioned that because um, one of my subscribers uh, asked me if it mattered and I, I uh, have clarified that and said no, that it didn't in, in another video, but just in case you're wondering the same thing, it was a good question and I thank her for it. Um, I'll just let you know that it's, um, it doesn't matter because we're just, we're just finishing off those stitches, grabbing them so that they don't unravel, okay? So then I'm gonna pull up on this bobby pin so I can get underneath that last stitch. I don't wanna take that waist yarn with me. Pull that through. Then I can go ahead and remove my stitch markers, my bobby pins, then yarn over, take it through that loop, and tighten it, okay? Now let's see what end I chose. Did I choose the hard end or the easy? Yep, I did, so that's good. So I'm going to find my end, roll up the rim, and pull, squeeze the, squeeze the um, stitch to the left, and then pull that top row out. Then go around a little bit more, roll up the, the rim there. <laughs> I feel like I'm at Tim Hortons, roll up the rim to win. Pinch that stitch and pull it through. Tim Hortons is a coffee place. Um, for those of you who, well, I'm sure most of you know what Tim Hortons is, but if you don't, Tim Hortons is a coffee place and they have roll up the rim to win. And uh, every once in a while, and you roll that rim up and you can win certain different things. So it's fun. So that's why I say roll up the rim, roll up it and you keep going till you get to the end. Oops, I got one more stitch to pull that through. And then it unravels like a dream. And you can remove your waist yarn, just like that. Okay, so that's one side almost done here. There we go, that's one side done. See, I left myself a good length tail so that um, later when I'm joining my corners here, I, I have uh, a working yarn. Let's go to the other side. Same thing. We're gonna untie that little, that little knot that I put in there, just the single tie. Then if you put them down, you'll see that the, the stitch that the waist yarn is coming out of, that's what I use as my first stitch. 
the stitch to the left of it where my working yarn, see my working yarn is coming out of this bottom stitch here. You go to the stitch right on top of it and that's your last stitch, okay? So again, you're gonna make sure that those two yarn ends are outside of your work because otherwise you'll sew them into your work and then you have to undo it so you can find them, okay? And we're gonna count around. We know there's um, 22 stitches on here, so the halfway point would be 11 and 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I'm gonna put it under the 12th stitch. Then I'm gonna pick up the 11th, put it through the loop on my hook, then go down to the bottom and we're gonna do the exact same thing. Now you're gonna go ahead and you're going to do that on every panel, all sides. Now I waited um, to the end of, to this part in the video to show you this, but I actually close up both ends every time, as soon as I'm done um, making it and taking the panel off my machine, I, I generally will gen then just go to town and, and close both of the ends up on that panel and put it aside and then it's done. Um, I don't usually do an assembly line where I make all my panels in because then you need all those little pieces of waste yarn. Now I'm going to take this waste yarn off and I'll use it for the next panel. Okay, so uh, that's how I, how I go about doing it. And when I'm not talking on camera, I count my stitches. I want to make sure that I've actually worked 22, making sure that you count the stitch that was on your number 12 that you counted, that you put on your hook. That's number one. Okay, so now um, I got to find this stitch here. That one was a little difficult to find. So all I got to do, nope, I got one more right here. Got that out of the way, okay. So now I'm gonna go 21, take out that stitch marker, pull up on this one so I can find my stitch, go underneath, take that out, that's 22. Then I'm gonna yarn over and put it through that loop on my hook and finish that off. And this particular side is the easy side, so you just gotta grab the top one and pull and it releases your waist yarn with no problem. Okay, so go ahead and get um, all of your ends finished beautifully like that. It's just a beautiful flat seamed finish. I just, I love it. I, and I find a, a lot of joy and relaxation in, in doing this crochet part. It's actually one of the parts I enjoy doing the most. So um, find joy in it and get all of them done because there's 24 ends that you need to do. It doesn't take that long actually. And I'll see you back and we'll join our panels. Okay, just a quick little tip before we start sewing them together. Place them out in three panels like this on your bed. So the first two on the left are the two that we made, um, we made six of each of those. And panel one and panel three on this section are the same. It's just that the, the third panel is um, flipped the other way so that the other end is at the top. And then panel two and panel four are the same. Um, panel four is, or panel two is just flipped um, to put the other end at the top and that's panel four. Okay. So this is, this is one section here. This is the second section and that's the third section. Go ahead and put them on your bed or on a table or someplace like that, um, in order so that you, um, when you grab them, we're going to grab them from the left, the one with the blue at the top. Um, you'll have them in the right order and you won't make any mistakes. Okay. So we are going to do the braided join. It's my favorite join for baby blankets. I think it softens it up and just makes it so beautiful. However, this per particular blanket is soft looking anyways. So you can do the invisible join if you like, but um, I'm sticking to the braided join and, and uh, I just love it. I think it's great. So I put the first four panels together. Um, so this with the blue at the top and then the green and then white, white. And you wanna make sure that you follow that same pattern, blue, green, white, white. Um, but when you reverse these two, make sure that they're that this third panel is this first panel because you want the colors to be the same down at the bottom, okay? Not reverse like this one. So um, that's the way we're going to do that one. And then if I'm gonna just take it down to the bottom here, just so you can see, then it's white, white, green, blue, okay? So that's the, that's the bottom. I've just got it all folded here so I can get it on camera. So all across the bottom, you're gonna always have white, white, green, blue, white, white, green, blue, white, white, green, blue. And at the top, you're gonna have blue, green, white, white, blue, green, white, white, blue, green, white, white. Now you'll see that I put a stitch marker in there because you're gonna always have, you're gonna work your braid down the right side. So I'm gonna just grab my next panel. And another little tip, is if you've got an end coming off this corner here and an end on this one, don't put them together like this because then you have two, 
two working strands on on this like that are joined and because we use these two to close off the top part here so now I know I need blue and green but I also need at the bottom it's got to be where it's a uh, blue green white white okay so you've got your panels all laid out on your bed so that'll help you okay and we're going to put this here but the reason why I want to put this stitch marker on there because it always tells me that this is the front of my work and so I'm going to always do it like this so that this stitch marker is away from my body I'm going to be working it down this way so this stitch marker is away from me and the panel that I'm working on is facing me okay so go ahead and get that ready I'm going to lower my camera and then I'll show you how you do the braided join Okay, we've already established that this is the top because that's we want to make sure we're working our braid down um, with this part, with this always facing up. So when I'm done doing this, uh, attaching these two, I'm going to take this stitch marker and I'm going to move it to the front here so that I always know that my front of my work is up when I'm when I'm seaming together. Okay, makes a difference because the back does look different. Okay, um, it looks nice, but it look it does look different. I don't like how this join is. I think this this one join is a little bit wonky <laughs> it's a uh, so i'm going to play with those stitches later to stretch them a little bit so that i can get that line to lined up line up a little bit better i'm, I'm not uh, happy with that so um i'm very careful when i do my corners but i obviously missed that one being you know really aware of what i was doing there so okay so you're going to make sure that you find the side of your your work and you want to make sure that the wide part of your v of your stitch is down and the point is up on both of them. You can't see it very well on the white. Um, you'll see it once we work down past the white. I'll be able to show you a little bit better. Maybe you'll understand it if you're not sure. Okay, and this would be my first top of the stitch and this is the top of the stitch, these tight ones right there. I don't work into those, that's what I use this for. Okay, um, I just find I'm not gonna fight with it. So I go into the second one, you pull up, you go between that stitch, you pull up that bar, then you go across to this other one you go into that stitch, you pull up the bar, and you put it through that loop that was on your hook, okay? Now I go across to this one, and you see that this is the stitch that I've worked on. It's in, coming out of this stitch, so I'm going to count that as one, two, because I'm going to miss this next bar, and I'm going to go up, pick up that one, take it through the loop on my hook. Then I'm going to count one, two, pick up that bar, put it through the loop on my hook, okay? So we're missing a bar all the time. So I always count these, count the spaces. It helps me. I go one, two, pick up the bar, put it through the loop on my hook. One, two, pick up the bar. Oops, I got caught on there. There we go. Put it through the loop on my hook. So you can see that this is the worked one. So one, two, one, two. It's hard for you to see when I'm doing it on white. I know that. So my apologies, but we'll get we'll get past it. We'll get down to the um, and then you can just like you can visual vi see it really easily, and then you can really work your way down with no problem. But you always want to make sure that you're on that same row. Do not let it twist. Stay on the same row on both sides all the way down, making sure the wide part of your V is on the bottom on both sides. Okay. Go all the way down here. I'm gonna twist it a little bit just so we're making sure we're on the same on the same row. There we go. Just lost it there for a second. Okay, so then I'm gonna go one, two, go into that one. One, two, one, two. And work my way down all the way down to the end I sure hope I'm not going off the camera here okay sometimes I do that and I I just don't realize it because I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and uh, I my hands slowly come closer to my body <laughs> and I don't realize that I've gone off camera so my apologies if I do that okay I do the best I can I'm a rookie a rookie camera person <laughs> okay here we go so one two I want to show you where you can see an obvious color change because um, like right here, I want these seams to match up and I'm going to show you how I do that. Now, 
obviously the one on that other side that I showed you that I wasn't happy with, I must have not been concentrating enough on that one, which surprises me because generally I'm very careful with that. But um, when you come down, I'm just going to get there. You will see that this is where your color changes because there's blue there and white there and then there's white here and green there. You want to make sure that the bar, this bar here and this bar here, if that's the one that we would have gone into, we want to make sure that it's even right across, um, that you take those two. But it's going to actually work out on this one. But if it was like, let's, let's, hmm. If there were, if there were two bars here, before this color change one and only one here, then I would take two on this side and just one on this side. And then I would take two on this side and one on this side to even it out. You wanna make sure that when you have your color changes here, so I have my blue and my white, my white and my green. Um, I see that's where my color changes. I wanna make sure that I'm grabbing that stitch that's between the two colors on one side, the stitch that's between the two colors on the other side and that's how you get your stitches your your rows to line up okay you don't want to grab one that's up higher and one that's lower I'm gonna see if I can I'm going to keep working all the way down until I get to the next color change where you can easily see it um, and uh, then I'll come back on with you and we'll we'll see if that one lands differently and uh, I can show you what I do okay all right so I'll see you when, keep going and I'll, I'll see you at the next green blue color change all right let's see what happens here I'm coming down and I want to make sure that um, that my colors line up so that this is the color change, green and white, and white and blue. Make sure that that doesn't turn. Green and white and white and blue, and you want those to line up. So one, two, one, two. Sometimes it, sometimes it doesn't just because, um, just because when you do your color change, it just if you if it rotates just one half of a stitch here, it's just it just is a slight jog off. Okay, so now if I went one two, it lands in be in that bar that's between the green and the white, which you will always want to pick up, and it happened again on this side. So for for ninety nine percent of the time it does, but if it doesn't, you make sure that you pick up that you make sure you pick them them up at the same place so then if I had to count two on one side and only one on the other side then I work a couple stitches and then I do two on the opposite side and, and one on the next side just so I can I can get my stitch stitch count back in line because if you've done 200 rows on every panel you're going to have enough stitches to make it completely match to the end um, because because we've done the same amount of 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 rows right so sometimes your panels will look like one's a little bit longer than the other and that's that's simply because of the way you stretched it after you took it off your machine um, but if you've if you followed the pattern your 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 row counts will be the same on all of them so there's no reason why it shouldn't work okay so keep going get that done and when you get to the end I'll show you what I do okay here's an example I didn't get too far down and, and uh, uh, and it happened to me. So here's the example. Oops, no, I pulled on that too tight because it fell off the off the bench here. Okay, so now if I go one, two, one, two, so this two will get me in the center um, between the two colors. But this next stitch, now that's loose because it my hook grabbed it and my the end of the the weight of the blanket fell off the end of the table here okay so now if I was to do two I'd go down there and then I'd be missing this one so this is where my color change is so I'm going to just do one on this side and then I'm going to do one on this side and two on this side now I've caught up on my stitch count so that's what I meant by that so um, I'm glad that happened so you could see it doesn't happen very often but sometimes it sometimes it does and you just want to uh you know, just fix it and then make it up when you um, continue on down the row because you want to make sure that you're always doing your braid in that color change stitch um, and that will keep your rows um, in sync and, and your, your color change lines will be even. Okay, so keep going and I'll see you at the end. All right, we're at the end. Um, and because my tail is on this side, I'm going to go through this stitch right up here, just these two bars. I'm going to yarn over with this tail pull it through both of those. Then I'm going to take my needle, thread that yarn end, 
Then I'm just going to finish this off. I'm going to go through the blue side again and through the white side up at the top. Oops, this needle's a bit big, my other, my smaller needle's in the living room. Okay, and then we're going to just tie that off in a knot. We're going to then go ahead and hide it underneath here. Now, you don't have to, you don't have to um, do a border on this. You can just leave it like this because when you finish off your ends like this, you're doing it nice and straight. And it is straight, but I always do a crochet border. So um, I, I can easily just hide mine underneath the rim here because I'm gonna do a crochet border over top of it. If you're not doing a crochet border over top, then um, you will need to uh, go one way. I'll show you here. Pull it through one way. Then go ahead and pull it through the other way, just to secure it. And then you can, this one's a little short, so. And then you can take it down into, in between your, your double layers of work there to hide the end, yarn end. Okay, just like that. And then you're gonna cut that off. That's how I finish that end. Now the way I finish the other end that we started on Okay, is I just do the same thing. I take this this yarn end here and I work. I put it on my needle and I work it through there and close it off the same way I just showed you on the other side and then I hide it. Okay, so that's how you do that panel. But now that we've we've done that, we've got to make sure that we know that this is our front. So I'm going to take this stitch marker off. I'm going to move it over to this side to this next one. Then I'm going to grab my next panel and that next panel, this is going to, this is going to be up and this is going to face that way. And my next panel is going to line up this way and we're going to go down this way. Okay. So go ahead and do that with all 12 of your panels, hide all your, your yarn ends and uh, we'll see you when you're completed your blanket. Okay. Have fun, my friends. Okay. So this is what your blanket will look like when you have completed stitching it all together. Now I uh, asked you a question. <laughs> Um, when I laid the panels out on the on the bed, I said, "Can you find the mistake?" Um, and I had the last two panels in the second section reversed, so they needed to be switched. And I have done that before. I went ahead and sewed them together, and that's a, a reason why you lay them out. So you make sure you're grabbing the right one because it's so easy to get them mixed up. Okay, so. Um, this is how your blanket should look when you're done and it's absolutely beautiful. I absolutely love it And you can just leave it exactly like this or you can um, add some uh, fringes to the two ends or you can put um, What else can you do? You can do crochet border, which is what I'm going to do I'm going to do a simple crochet border if um, if you want to learn how to do that follow along with me I'm going to show it um, quickly because I have videos on single crochet, uh, half double crochet, double crochet, and treble crochet. If you want to learn how to crochet, um, then look for those videos on my channel. But we're going to do just a simple half double crochet border, but we have to start it out with um, a foundation row around the, around the whole blanket of single crochet. So I'm going to show you how to do that in the next um, section here, and uh, we'll get started right now. All right. Okay, let's get started. Um, so you're going to grab your crochet hook. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. You're gonna grab the color of yarn of choice. Um, I'm choosing the blue. And uh, I've already started, I'm, I'm almost, almost all the way around the blanket, but I'm going to, and I did that so that you can see what it's gonna look like with just a single crochet. But I'll show you what I do to start, okay? And then I'll, and then I'll hook up with where I left off before and continue there, okay? So we're going to make a slip knot on our hook then you're going to choose a spot. I'm going to choose to start going down the side here. Um, and so I'm just going to pick a, pick a spot underneath those two, those two, that one stitch, those two bars right there. And then I'm going to take my yarn. I'm going to yarn over and bring it through that stitch and the loop that's on my hook. Okay. And then I'm going to chain one and I'm ready to begin. I'm going to put that one yarn end behind. And then I'm going to single crochet into that same stitch. And that will be my first single crochet, okay? So you wanna get a stitch marker. Do I have one handy? Um, 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 um. I left my container upstairs, but you're going to want to get a stitch marker. Here, let me steal it from the other side, or I'll show you actually, like that. And you put it in your first stitch, okay? Just stick it in that first stitch that you worked. There's my knot 
or there's where I attached it and then I did my first single crochet in my first stitch there. And then when you're on a side like this where you see the stitches, you see the stitch there, stitch there, stitch there. Now I'm doing it on white, so that's not good. So let me just pull this out. I'm gonna begin. Well, I'm gonna just take this out. Now I showed you how you actually join it. So I'm gonna go down to where I actually was, okay? Just because it's easier for you to see the, on, the, on the blue than it is white. White's the hardest. White and black are hard to see your stitches. Okay, so there, this is the one I just did a single crochet in. And you'll see all these stitches, one, two, three, four, going um, along the side there. I go into every second stitch under both bars and I do a single crochet. Now again, I have videos on, on the crochet stitches if you need to, to learn them. So under every second I miss one, go under the two bars of that next stitch, do a single crochet every second stitch. Okay, that's down both sides. That's how I, how I do that, okay? And then when we get to the corner, so let me just work that up, because we're almost there. Oops. So you always got, when you join, you wanna chain one, um, and then you begin your, your, your stitches. Your first single crochet goes into that same space that you did your, um, that you joined, okay? So every second stitch here, and then you mark that first single crochet, not your join. You and I have a hard time seeing these white stitches, but we're managing, okay? And you're, you're crocheting with um, with a you know a fairly even tension. You don't want a tight tension because you don't want it to buckle. You just want a nice loose kind of tension. Now I have one left and then my corner. I always go into that one that's closest to my corner, even though I didn't have to skip one. Um, if if uh, if it works out that you skip one and go into that one right beside the corner, that's great. Then it's worked up that way. But if not, then just just go into that one that's right beside the corner. Then you're going to place your hook into that corner. Now, sometimes it's hard to poke it in there because it's tight. You're going to do a single crochet, chain one, and then a single crochet right back into that same spot. So every corner on your first row of single crochets is a single crochet, chain one, single crochet. Then you know, and I'm going to go show you over here on the darker color. Along the side here, we're going to do a single crochet on either side of the braid so I'll do one here, I'll do one here. And then when you look at your stitches, you'll see each row, like um, this one here, the point go of the stitch goes to the top. And then if you go half a, half a row over and make this your, your row, then the wide part of the stitch is there. I go into every wide stitch, every, every the top of every stitch. Like here's my first one. I'm gonna do one in my braid, both sides of my braid. Then I'm gonna go into this one, do a single crochet. Into this one, do a single crochet. Then I'm gonna go over to this one, see the wide part of the stitch is there, and then to this one, this one, this one, and that's how I do my top and my bottom, going into the wide part of every stitch across, and you'll get 10 um, stitches here and 11 when you count your braid. And uh, then you move on to the next, what, next one, and you do the exact same thing. And again, uh, the corners, single crochet, chain one, single crochet. So go ahead and get your, get around your blanket and do that and meet me back when you get to the start. Okay, before you continue on, I said that I would show you um, what it looks like. So that's what your single crochet is gonna look like on the sides. And then in the corners, your, your first row is going to look like that. And then when we get around to our second row, we're gonna go into that chain one here that, that uh, we did. It's hard to find, but it's there. Uh, okay, so that's, that's what, um, here's, the, here's the side. That's what that looks like, okay? So you wanna get a nice, a nice even, edge you don't want to have it puckering so you don't want to pull it so tight that it um, peckers and by going into the into the every stitch that's the same with the wide end at the top all your stitches are evenly spaced so when you see this little bar underneath it looks it looks beautiful it looks professionally done so um, go ahead and finish that and uh, we'll see you back when you finish get to the end of your row all right we've made it almost around and we're going to join um, where our stitch marker is. Now, I, I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning of the video, I don't think I did, but when you're crocheting your border, you wanna make sure that the right side of your blanket is facing up, is facing you, um, and that way your, your border is going to be um, 
the right side of your border will be showing on the right side of your project, okay? So I'm just going to finish this. I always go over to the left for some reason on these videos. So sometimes I have to, I'll do a whole segment and then I'll have to re delete it and redo it and pull out my work and redo it because I've, um, I've, uh, gone too far over to the left. I just naturally do it. So there we go. Now where my stitch marker is, I'm going to just take it out because I know where that stitch is, but you can take it out after you insert your hook if that helps you. I'm going to insert my hook into that first stitch, yarn over and bring it through both loops on that, both uh, through that stitch, both loops or both um, stitches, ugh, both bars. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. I've had a long day. Um, both bars on that stitch and then through the loop on my hook. Okay. And then I'm going to chain one. And then I'm going to start doing my half double crochet. So into that same loop. So I'm going to yarn over, go into that loop, do a half double crochet. Okay. Then I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to go into every stitch this time. I'm not going to miss stitches. Okay. And I'm going to do a double crochet, half double crochet. So yarn over, go into the stitch, drop out uh, your yarn, bring it through that stitch. You got three loops on your hook, yarn over, go through all three. That's a half double crochet. And I do have a video that explains that this is a little bit slower motion. Okay. So there we go, we're gonna do a half double crochet all the way to the corner. And then we gotta find that little chain one that we had. Get some slack on my yarn, okay. Almost, oops. There we go. I've got one more stitch right here because my, my chain one is right there. It's hard to see. So maybe when you're doing your um, corners too, if, if you're not used to finding um, your chain ones, then put a stitch marker there too so you know where it is, okay? So I'm gonna yarn over. I'm going to go into that chain one space. And I'm going to do five half double crochets. Three, four, and five. Okay, and then I'm going to, you see that next stitch? You're gonna start doing one double, half double crochet all the way down your side. I'm just gonna do a couple here and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, there you go. That's what it looks like. Um, it's just very soft, very, very, um, precious for a lack of a better word on a on a baby blanket I think it just softens it up and just uh, just looks so nice and and a half double crochet is just a small um, a little stitch in length and it just kind of really complements the the braid that we have there going on so I'm going to just stick with one row often on my baby blankets I will do more than one row of of border but for this particular blanket I think one row is all we um, all we need and it's all I want so I'm going to go ahead and finish that off and when I'm done you're going when you get to the end here you're going to slip stitch to join underneath this stitch here and finish off and hide your ends all right so keep going and have fun well, congratulations, you have finished your blanket. I wish I could see them all. I'm sure all the color um, choices are just absolutely beautiful. My blanket measures 37 inches by 37 inches. Now, if you've used a four weight worsted weight yarn, it's probably gonna be closer to 40 by 40, somewhere in that neighbor um, neighborhood. So I'm sure it's absolutely gorgeous, whatever choices you have made. So again, thanks my friends for your support on my channel and for, for watching my videos and for um, subscribing and hitting the like button and all the wonderful comments. I just have so much pleasure in reading all your comments. So thank you so much. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.